Look at this. I am really in the Bahamas now. <laughs> Have you ever wondered why a calm, sunny morning in the Bahamas can turn into a stormy, lightning-filled afternoon? You wake up to a gentle breeze and crystal clear skies, but in mid-afternoon, towering clouds start to build on the horizon and before you know it, a tropical downpour is soaking the palm trees. Today, we're going to uncover the fascinating meteorological forces at play around the Bahamas. From the gentle dance between land and sea breeze to towering tropical thunderstorms and the powerful influence of subtropical high pressure systems, this region is a weather wonderland. Let's dive in and explore why the Bahamas can be both paradise and powerhouse when it comes to coastal weather. Let's start with something you'll notice almost daily when flying around or vacationing near the coast, the regular switch between land and sea breezes. During the day, especially on clear sunny days, the land heats up much faster than the surrounding ocean. The air above the land gets warmer and expands and starts to rise. Now that creates a zone of low pressure near the land surface. Meanwhile, the sea remains cooler and the air above it stays relatively dense and stable. That results in a slightly high pressure just over shore. And what happens when you go an air at a higher pressure in one place and low pressure in another, air moves. So cool, moist air from the ocean is drawn toward the land to replace the rising warm air. This is your sea breeze. It typically kicks in at late morning or to early afternoon and can be felt up to like five nautical miles inland. The strength of a sea breeze depends on the temperature difference between the land and sea. Now in the Bahamas, where daytime heating is intense, sea breezes can be quite noticeable, often reaching speeds of 10 to 15 knots. I'm actually feeling one right now. So you might have felt this when landing in Nassau or flying into an inland airstrip when wind picks up slightly and shifts direction as you approach the coast. That's your sea breeze. At night, things reverse. The land cools down much faster than the ocean and now the air over land becomes denser and cooler creating high pressure at the surface compared to the relatively warmer sea. This sets up a gentle flow of air backwards towards the sea again. There you have your land breeze. It's weaker than the sea breeze, usually around five knots, and doesn't reach as far, but you'll find it blowing out to sea during the late night and early morning hours. In aviation terms, this shift in wind patterns can affect coastal approaches and departures, especially when flying via far. Always pay attention to these micro-meteorological changes when operating near coastal areas. So let's have a look at a question from the ATPQ database. Now let's move on from the breezes to the Booms, the tropical thunderstorms are a regular feature here in the Bahamas, especially in the afternoon. But why are they so common here? Thunderstorms need three ingredients, moisture, instability, and a lifting mechanism. Now the Bahamas has all three of them on a daily basis. Let's start with moisture. Surrounded by warm ocean waters, often above 26 degrees, the atmosphere is loaded with humidity. Evaporation from the sea surface feeds the lower atmosphere with water vapor. Then instability, with strong daytime heating over land, warm air parcels rise rapidly through cooler air above, creating vertical instability. Three, Lift, here's where the sea breezes come back into play. The cool air rushing from the ocean undercuts the hot air over land, forcing it to rise. This lifting action is a prime trigger for convection. The result, big bubbling columbus clouds that often grow 30,000 feet and higher. By mid-afternoon, you'll often spot these cloud towers popping up inland, especially where converging sea breezes meet. Now let's scale things up a bit. In some cases, these thunderstorms over warm tropical oceans can grow into much larger systems known as tropical revolving storms, or TRS. Now these thermal depressions get their 
energy from the release of latent heat. Now, the heat stored in water vapor that's released when it condensates into cloud droplets. As warm, moist air rises and cools, the condensation releases energy, fueling more uplift and cloud growth. A TRS can only form under specific conditions. The sea surface temperature must be at least 26 degrees. There must be sufficient Corollis force, meaning it can't form too close to the equator, usually above 5 degrees latitude. And there must be sufficiently unstable atmosphere to allow clouds to break through the trade wind inversion. So therefore, let's take another look at an HVLQ question. So why is this the case? Well, as air travels across the ocean, it picks up moisture. By the time it reaches the Western Atlantic, it's heavily saturated. Also, the trade wind inversion, which suppresses cloud growth, is much weaker in the Western Atlantic than it is in the East. This means convection is less restricted and storms can grow vertically more easily. That's why the Bahamas sees more storm development than, say, the eastern Atlantic near the African coast. And this brings us to the last HPLQ question. Now let's talk about these subtropical high pressure systems like the Azores High or the Bermuda High and their influence on the Bohemian weather. These are semi-permanent high pressure zones that sit between 20 to 35 degrees latitude. Now in the northern hemisphere, the Bermuda High often dominates the Atlantic. High pressure systems are associated with descending air, which warms and dries out as it sinks. Now this suppresses cloud formation and leads to stable dry weather. In the Bahamas, when the Bermuda High is sitting nearby, you'll typically get clear skies, light winds, and very little rain. Now, these conditions are great for flying, but not great if you're looking forward to grow some crop. These subtropical highs migrate with the seasons. Now, in summer, the Bermuda High shifts northward, allowing tropical storms to develop and potentially track toward the Bahamas. In the winter, it shifts southward, bringing more stable conditions. Now, interestingly, this shift is also responsible for the short, wet and dry seasons in subtropical climates. At lower latitudes, the wet season typically occurs in summer. At higher latitudes, the wet season comes in winter. In the Bahamas, you get a summer wet season when the high weakens or moves away and a dry winter season when it sits overhead. These highs also influence tropical storm paths. A strong Bermuda high can steer hurricanes westward toward the US or the Bahamas, and if there's a weakness or break in the high, storms may curve northward into the Atlantic. So the next time you check a hurricane forecast map and see those long curving spaghetti tracks, just remember it's not random. The subtropical highs are playing a major role in this. So let's go back to that peaceful bohemian morning we talked about. The sun rises as it is right now, heating the land faster than the sea. A sea breeze kicks in, drawing moist air inland. Now the air rises and mid-afternoon, boom, you have got those thunderstorms towering overhead. Add in the pressure or absence of a subtropical high and you might get clear skies, a short storm or even the beginnings of a tropical cyclone. So from the gentle coastal breezes to the powerful systems that shape entire seasons, the Bahamas sit at a meteorological crossroad. A place where land, sea and the sky meet and sometimes collide in spectacular ways. So next time you're flying over this tropical paradise, <laughs> take a moment to look out the window. The clouds, the winds and the sea, they're all part of a much bigger story. That's it for today. If you have any more questions or additional notes about the subtropical weather here in the beautiful Bahamas, feel free to use the comment section below. If you have some or other aviation related questions, please be sure to check out my other videos and ask in the comment section below for the chance to have your questions answered in a future video. Thank you very much for your time. And on that bombshell, lovely greetings 
from the Bahamas. This is not fake. This is actual. I'm really standing here. <laughs> and here's your checklist for today. Subscribe to my channel. Check. Activate the notification bell. Check. Follow my Instagram account. Check. And join our fantastic Patreon community. Check. And don't forget, a good pilot is always learning, especially when he's in the Bahamas. <laughs> Wishing you all the best. You're Captain Joe. Ha, ha, ha.